This is actually the second time of me trying this 2x2 elevator. The last time was a bit confusing, so this time I'll be showing you an updated version for 1.20 and above, and this is a 2x2 piston elevator. You can go all the way down, as usual, and when you reach the bottom, you can send the elevator back up to the top. Now this is all flush with the ground, so it's very secretive, but you can also use it as a general purpose elevator as well. And we can also call it from the top. And I've also tweaked it to be even better this time and even more compact. And there we go, it stops at the top. Simple as that. That is the elevator for you guys. And for the items you will need, four slime blocks, three sticky pistons, two observers, a whole bunch of redstone dust, you don't really know how much redstone dust you're gonna use, so just bring as much as you can. Quite a bit of redstone torches, dependent on how deep you want this underground elevator to run. And if you're in survival, I would recommend to craft as many as you think you need as we go along the tutorial. One repeater, one dropper, one stone button, any type of button to be fair, we fine. And an oak trap door, why is there a cow in the way? And next off we have a bunch of chosen blocks, in, in this case I'm going to be using polished andesite, you can use any sort of block you want as decoration or used in mainly in the build. A bunch of immovable blocks, I'll leave a link in the description for a list of immovable blocks for Java edition, this machine will only work in Java edition, but in this case I'm using barrels, because they look the best inside of an elevator. But you could use obsidian, you could use uh, air if you wanted to, but I'll leave that up to you. And we have a bunch of uh, just temporary blocks, so you can easily mine. In this case, I'm going to be using dirt, but if you're in creative, you can just use your chosen block as temporary blocks. And those are your items. So we can take all our items out, and let's go to a flat area. I think, yeah, this area looks quite good, so we'll, we'll, we'll shoo away these horses. I hope you're excited like I am. And we'll start building this elevator. Now, obviously, this is made entirely by me, so there might be a couple of problems with it. I've tested it a few times, as you can see in the background, so it's it's, it's going to work fine. Okay, now to start off, let's place down two observers on top of each other, and you should be able to see those red dots facing you and the other side should be the faces of the observers. And they're going to place down a slime block on the bottom observer, and then a sticky piston right next to it facing upwards. And then a slime block on top of that piston, and if we can crouch and kind of go to the side of this, the very side of this slime block, you can place another piston, a sticky piston, facing downwards onto top of on top of this uh, slime block. So you have this sort of shape, and the slime machine is pretty much done except for the bit that connects it all. And for that, we're gonna place uh, a layer of slime blocks on top of the the elevator you just built. And on top of that, you're gonna place your chosen block, or in my case, it will be polished andesite. If you're building this inside the planes, I would recommend. Maybe getting a bunch of grass blocks and placing them on top, this will help disguise it more. But I'm going to leave it as a uh, polished andesite just for tutorial sake. And now we're going to go ahead and get our immovable blocks, in this case is my barrels. And we're going to go on top and two blocks high, we're going to place a barrel right there. Now this is, this is just to position the flying machine away from us so we can work on top of the elevator shaft. So now you've done that, it should be too high above the elevator. You're going to go ahead and activate it actually. And you should see it stops at top of that immovable block. If it doesn't stop and it carries on going, this what you place down is not an immovable block. So try and try and get an immovable block next time. And also save the flying machine if it's going to space. But you can see it's started to pull up a block. Now that block is pretty much useless. We don't need to worry about it pulling up any blocks. You can just delete the block because underneath the flying machine will be where we build our elevator shaft or our dugout area. And let's clean this up. So there we go, we have a flat surface. And now we're gonna place some blocks as markers on the side the observers are facing. So in this instance, it's facing this way. So I'll place some blocks, any sort of blocks, uh, preferably temporary blocks would do, uh, on this side like so so we know which direction the observers are facing. And we're going to start digging out this full elevated shaft. Normally you would have to dig out this 2x2 two two area, which I recommend you guys do, but just for tutorial purposes I'm going to be digging out one more layer around it, so we have more of a clear view on how I'm going to do things. So like so, so a 4x4 four four area is what I'm going to dig, you can dig a 2x2 two two area, it doesn't really matter, and you're going to dig down as far as you want the elevator to go, until you find where you want to put your entrance. Now I would recommend if you want to follow this guide step by step and not be confused, I would recommend digging everything out like I have, but obviously you don't have to if you know what you're doing. There you go, 
And also make sure your markers are still there. If the markers aren't there, you can use the observer to find out which way it's pointing. In this case, wherever it's pointing with that triangle, the opposite way is where the observer is pointing. Now this side, or where the marker blocks are, will be ha will have to be where your entrance is, just to make everything much simpler. So the elevator will come down here, and your entrance will be over here. But obviously, if you just leave it as this, your actual entrance will have to be up there somewhere, because it's, it's four blocks in height. So you're actually going to have to dig down some more blocks to get at the floor level. But first, before we do that, let's go ahead and mark our entrance uh, with some blocks. I'm going to use my chosen blocks. Uh, these blocks, I'm going to mark my entrance. It's a 2x2 two two entrance. This is where I intend the elevator to land. So what we're going to do next is we're going to dig down five more blocks. Oh, some copper. Uh, four, five. That should be five. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, one more. There we go. Now we're at five. So we should have the elevator shaft or dugouts an entrance, and then we also have five blocks deep of a hole. Now at the bottom of the hole, you can go ahead and place some um, immovable blocks, some barrels will do, or whatever your immovable block is, and place them down here. Now if you're in survival, I do recommend you place down some ladders or some scaffolding to get all the way up and down, because that could be quite tedious for you guys to do. But now you've got that hole with the barrels and the entrance. Obviously, if you have a pre-built entrance, then make sure this entrance is in the direction the observers are facing, which you can tell by your marker block. So the entrance must be on this side for you to follow my tutorial. But anyways, next you're going to dig out a kind of a 2x2 two two area in this 5 deep hole you've just dug, and we're going to place on a trapdoor right here. So the trapdoor is in line with the entrance and the marker blocks up there. And we're going to place down two more blocks behind the trapdoor, and then we're going to place down some redstone dust across the blocks. So you should have this sort of, this sort of layout, um, just for uh, design's sake, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this differently like that, there we go. Now this trapdoor will have an important function of activating the elevator to go back up, so it's very very useful. Now actually what you should do is you should go ahead and fill out these outer walls with your removable block, in this case I'm not going to worry about design as much because barrels are a bit tedious to place, but just fill out the blocks that probably will be touching the elevator when they come down, and we'll fill out this area right here as well. There we go, so it's all filled out, as you can see, and if you go to the top, you can see it's it's a, a very deep hole of immovable blocks and it should provide something safe for the elevator to land to without sticking to anything and therefore it won't stop. And now that's covered, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dig out this entrance a bit more. We're gonna go past, we're gonna dig out this entrance, you know, make the entrance to the base very cool. And we're gonna place a button on this side right here of the, the, the entrance, so right there, right at the bottom right of your entrance. And we can dig around of the button, underneath the button, we can place down one singular redstone dust. When you press the button, it should activate, there we go. And we're gonna have to connect this down to the bottom trap door. So to do that simply, we're gonna destroy the block next to the redstone, and we're gonna place a redstone torch right there. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and dig out that bottom block underneath the redstone torch, and we're gonna place down our redstone dust there, and you should see it lights up, and the redstone, the trapdoor is actually now activated. So when you push this button, you should see the trapdoor should actually move. There we go. Any explanations of this will be later in the video. And now we're going to build out our connection, our redstone array, lots of redstone torches on top of each other to connect to the top mechanism that's soon to be created. So actually to help us a bit more, we're going to dig out some of this wall. Uh, like this just so we can we can see what we're doing and right now you can see the redstone dust is right underneath this button and this redstone dust is also simultaneously will power this block right here now this is where we're going to start our redstone torch array so we're going to place down a redstone torch up there and going all the way to the top we're going to place down a block and then a redstone torch, and block, redstone torch, block, redstone torch, all the way until you're near the surface. Now the signals, the states of the redstone torch should be alternating. So you should start off as on, then off, and then we can place one more, on, then off, and then on. Now ideally your redstone torch should end up like this, and it should be turned off, and it should be one block from the surface. Okay, so here I am at the example um, elevator, and you can see the last redstone torch is turned off. Now ideally, if you have this, this sort of layout of the last redstone torch turned off, you can leave it be. This is exactly how you want to have it. But in my case, you can see the last torch is actually turned on, and we can place no more torches without breaking the surface, which is not what we want. So to fix this, what you're going to have to do, unfortunately, is strip the whole thing down and move it up by one. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to destroy all this, you're going to line the redstone dust up across one more, and you're going to dig up one, 
and you're going to place one redstone torch up there. But then the next redstone torch will have to be up here. And then on top of that, you're going to place a block and then you're going to carry on your normal redstone array all the way to the top and you should end up with the last redstone torch being turned off one block from the surface and that is exactly what you need. It's a bit more complicated, you could use pistons and stuff to transfer signals up and down but I thought this was the cheapest way and if you're interested about other ways of doing this I'll tell you about it at the end of the video. Okay now that you're down here if you want survival you can start by going ahead and filling up this section of the elevator with your immovable blocks because that's what the elevator is going to come down in and we don't want the elevator to stick. All you need to do is fill in this two wide section right here up till the top layer in line with this last redstone torch. These corner areas you will not need to cover in with anything so you can save some materials because the elevator itself will not actually be touching them so it doesn't really matter. And now you're at the top you can land up here. You can get rid of these markers because we don't need them anymore. And now we'll build the upper mechanism, the stopping mechanism for the elevator and the mechanism to allow it to go back down. Now actually you might want it to be a bit lower so you can destroy these two blocks just so you have a platform to stand on and build this place. You can build another bit of platform over here. If you want survival this will be quite necessary and we can dig out this 2x4 area uh, right here so we have more space to plan everything out and put in our mechanisms. So after you've done that, you have this sort of layout. You're going to bring out the redstone torch connection and you're going to place down one piece of redstone dust right there. And then you're going to place a redstone torch on the block on the opposite side. And then you're going to place a repeater, your one and only repeater, facing away from this redstone torch. And you're going to click it once, your right click it once, to set a delay of two ticks, two redstone ticks instead of one redstone tick. The repeater itself is one redstone tick, so clicking it again will give you two redstone ticks. And you can place a block in front of that repeater, and then you can place down your dropper in any way, shape or form. If you don't want to see the dropper necessarily, you can place it like this, so the face is facing away. It won't be filled with anything, so that's, that's all good. And then we're going to place our sticky piston right in the middle of this, right there. And now we can walk over to this other side. Let me just place a walkway to this other side of uh, the mechanism. And then now you're on this side, you're going to place down one, two redstone dust. So it lights up and it's connected to the redstone torch. And you're actually going to weirdly dig out the base of the piston and you're going to place redstone through it. As you can see, the piston has extended and the redstone actually activates the piston. This is just a quirky mechanic of redstone, by the way. It's, it's kind of crazy, but, but you can also do the same thing with observers if you didn't know already. And then we can optionally fill it out if you want to. So now we have this area pretty much completed. The reason why we went to this side is so if we go to this side, we'll just get blocked off. And if you want to survive, it'll be quite a pain to get out. So now what you're going to do is you're going to destroy your platform you've made if you have made a platform, like so. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to go up to the top area and activate your elevator. And now you can look down and make sure all the surfaces around which the elevator will come down will not stick to it. So actually, I need to go ahead and replace these two blocks uh, with my immovable blocks. There we go, otherwise the elevator will stick to it. And for the last piece of this flying machine, you're going to place a block inside this gap, like so. Any block will do. Make sure it's not immovable, so not the barrel. Instead, you can use your chosen block as well. I'll explain why later in the video, but now, finally, to activate this thing, we can go ahead and place an immovable block in front of that top observer. And it should go all the way down, and it shouldn't stop, ideally. It should become flush with the floor, there we go, nice. If it suddenly stops or something goes wrong, make sure the flying machine is built correctly and make sure it hasn't stuck to any of the walls, which you might have missed as movable blocks. But now that's confirmed, everything is working. You can go down and you can build some sort of platform if you're still in survival, like so. And you're going to place down one movable block on top of this piston head. So in this case, I'm going to be using my chosen block and the andesite block. And that, that is the top mechanism completed. Yeah, it's quite simple actually. And now you're going to fill in the gaps up here. I'm going to fill in this gap with immovable blocks as you can see just so the pistons, the elevators doesn't stick. And you're going to start actually finally filling in the sides of this elevator shaft. Make sure that you don't waste time filling the corners because they won't be needed. The same goes for this corner right here. We don't need to fill in this corner, only the two wide 
area right here. So now you're going to fill in the rest of the walls with immovable blocks and your elevator shaft should be almost complete. Likewise with this area, you don't need to fill this all in, it'll just save you some time. You can just go ahead and fill in this area right here because the elevator is only only going to go up and down this 2x2 two two area. But unless you want to have some sort of visual scene around you, as long as the area around is either removable blocks or air, then it should be fine. And there we go, I think that is the last barrel. We should have a full and complete elevator shaft for our elevator to go up and down in. As you can see, everything is flush, everything is full. The corner blocks don't have to be filled, you can just fill it up uh, with dirt on the top if you want to. And you can also actually fill in the rest of this top compartment. And now we have literally the elevator shaft complete. Now the only one downside is that I haven't created um, a calling system from the top because if you're gonna go down, normally you would want to go back up as well. So I haven't built a connection downwards because of that same reason. And if you want it to be secret, then usually you would want the elevator to come back up anyway and hide your elevator shaft. But now we're gonna place down the last button to actually make this whole elevator complete. Now if you are facing the piston, where the piston will be, all you need to do really is place a button at the very top right block of this piston elevator. So the piston elevator is here and the button is right here. That's all you need to do and if you press the button, you should see the elevator go all the way down, which is pretty cool if you ask me. You can just dig around and see where the piston is and once you've found where the piston is, you can find where this redstone dust is and on top of that you can place your button or whatever you want to activate it with and that should be fine. You can activate this with whatever you want, as long as it somehow connects to this redstone dust right here, because it's the one that activates it all. And actually, you can go ahead and cover this up. I can place back our button. There you go. Now, from now, the rest of the video is going to be me explaining this whole thing and giving you ideas of how to make a calling mechanism to call from the top of the elevator. Now, if you're confused or if you got to the end of the video and you're like, help me, please, or if you just want an explanation of how this works, let's go over here where I've constructed the same, literally the same scenario, but above ground so you guys can see it more clearly and if you go down you can see at the bottom it's literally the exact same concept and I've also made it a lot higher up <laughs> so let's break this whole thing down from the start when you press the button right here it's gonna activate this redstone dust which will deactivate this redstone torch which will flip that uh, trapdoor right there. And in doing so, it will activate this flying machine. And if we try right here, the flying machine will start to make its way up to the top. And once it's at the top, it will stop like that. As, as simple as that. The reason why it stops is because of this movable block right here. Because pistons can push a maximum of 12 blocks, this one block right here provides the 13th block, which it no longer can push anymore. So it completely stops. And that's why we added this one block right here, which gives the contraption a maximum of 12 blocks to push. And so that one block right here is the 13th block, so it can no longer push. In the other version of this contraption, I actually didn't have this block in. And somehow it still worked for me, but in fact it wouldn't actually work, and that was why. And explaining things from the top, if we press this button, it will activate this redstone dust, which deactivates this redstone torch, which deactivates this redstone repeater, which deactivates that dropper. Actually, it's a display dispenser here but it can also be a dropper and observers can detect the state changes of a dispenser or a dropper so if it becomes powered it will detect it if it becomes unpowered it will also detect it but this is also on a delay of two ticks and that's because we want this sticky piston to retract first before we send the whole machine down otherwise it will stop at the block because it, it reaches piston push limit and we can simulate this right here as you can see, it's a split second more delay here. It pushes back and then the dispenser fires, which sends the whole thing down without without it being stopped at its own limit. Now onto the part where you might want it to automatically send itself back up after you've reached the bottom. In that case at the bottom, I've added a circuit that helps uh, achieve its purpose and also delay over here. So when the elevator comes down, it will detect it and it'll send the, the elevator back up. It has a short delay, so the person can actually get off the elevator before it sends back up, but that's pretty much how it works. You can make this version a lot of different ways. You could also do this and have this work. This could also work as well. There's lots of different ways you could, you could structure it. But the main thing is just make sure the elevator does not stick to anything, otherwise it will stop and it probably will break your mind and your soul. <laughs> But if you actually want an activation system from the top to call it back up, you can make some sort of design like this, 
where you use the redstone torch array actually to send a signal downwards. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I didn't add this to the final design is because it's uh, quite tedious to build underground especially, but if you have the skill you can do this sort of creation. And down here I just connected it with the redstone repeater to the block right here which will power this redstone dust and it might be the less efficient way of doing it but it still works and it's quite cheap actually. Right, but there are a few honourable mentions of how to vertically uh, transport some signals for your elevator if you wanted to. This one is a very very simple redstone staircase downwards. Yeah, that's all you need if you want to cheaply and effectively reach the very bottom. Now of course, Resden does have a limit so you might need to put some repeaters in to carry the signal going. Just connect this to the bottom trap door uh, of your elevator and it should work flawlessly. If you have the time then that also works. And then a weird one is this one, um, yeah it works. This is kind of insane but I'm surprised it's still in the game. <laughs> Basically just makes the whole thing, the whole middle section kind of bulk outwards so then you can detect it with an observer and then send a signal, which you can obviously link to the trapdoor at the bottom, and there we go. And another mention is the oak leaves, which surprisingly work. Um, yeah, this has been in the game for quite some time as well, but for some reason the oak log updating the rest of these leaves makes the update flow to the observer, and you can easily detect that, but the only thing is, it has a limit of 7 leaves you can transfer signals to, so you're gonna have to work with that, and that would be quite complex and quite expensive as well to get these observers. Or you could use, uh, the dropper, a fancy dropper mechanic, and literally use a dropper inside to shoot your signal down. Look at that, like, it works. And then you can just connect it to a trapdoor and it works. That is your downward signal. Yep, there, there's probably a couple more that I've missed. You could use water if you wanted to. Now you can see why I didn't put this into the final product because they're quite complex or they're very expensive and bulky as well. And yeah, that's it. But before you go, before you go, this whole world download will be in the description down below. So if you somehow are confused or you can't get your elevator to work, then you can just join this world in 1.20, put this in your saves folder in your Minecraft, and it should be fine. This should work. And you can come here and test around. You can play around with the different mechanics and see where you went wrong if you did go wrong anyway. But hey, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this elevator works for you perfectly well. If you have any problems, do be sure to comment down below and I'll try to answer you as ASAP as I can. And if you're, if you're watching and you're a skyblocker, then maybe, maybe this can be useful to you, but maybe not. And if you like what I'm doing on my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well to show your support and be notified when I next upload another video. Redstone some videos much less often nowadays now that we have Skyblock on the channel, but I'll try and make one whenever I can. But whilst you wait for the next Redstone video, why not check out one of these two other videos to see some more from me, and I'll catch you over there. Lee Newman, good night.